All right, guys, in this video, we're going to cover the mystery behind Delta Defense Group, also known as DDG. You might have heard about DDG weapons before uh, from various other publications online, but today I'm going to go into detail about kind of the backstory behind it, who I believe manufactures them, and uh, some other stuff. So what is DDG? Well, Delta Defense Group abbreviated to DDG, doesn't exist. It is basically a ghost company that produces ghost guns. I know that might sound confusing, uh, but it kind of makes sense when you want to make plausibly deniable weapons uh, that you don't really want traced back to you easily. Um, it, it, I, I see the point of having a ghost company like this. Whilst other countries, uh, they just, you know, will they'll not even put a company name on the weapon it might just have a serial number if that uh, or some serialized components but anyway delta defense group it really became a thing in the late 2010s um, and up till a couple of years ago in the 2020s and now it's kind of died off and there doesn't seem to be any new ddg weapons in circulation so where is ddg based well, really, DDG appeared firstly in prop Iraq proper. Uh, so, you know, middle, you know, uh, southern Iraq, uh, they started appearing on the black markets uh, that, you know, are advertised all over the internet. You know, on various social media sites, you can find Iraqi black markets where people are selling weapons. And that's kind of where the DDG guns first appeared. Then we did get some in, uh, you know, the Kurdish Autonomous Region, um, KRG, Iraqi Kurdistan, has several names people call it. Where it's, it's basically kind of its own country within a country. Um, hard to explain, but it, it's, a, it's a part of Iraq that's controlled by ethnic Kurds. Uh, they're kind of different from Arabs. Um, of course, some of you might have heard of, uh, you know, what... Saddam's government went after them in the past, uh, the Kurds and whatnot. But DDG weapons have also appeared in Kurdistan, but what's different about in Kurdistan is they have appeared in the hands of Kurdish security and military forces, uh, specifically the Kurdish commandos. Um, there's a, a lot of pictures of them with 11.5 inch, I'll put up a picture now, a couple hopefully, uh, of Kurdish commandos with 11.5 inch AR-15 pattern assault rifles that are basically the same as uh, the forged receiver DDG carbons. Um, so yeah, they've, they've appeared in the hands of them. We'll go into further detail uh, later about the Kurds use of DDG weapons. Anyways, so what are the models of DDG weapons? Well, Delta Defense Group, they really only are, it only consists of small arms and pretty innocent small arms. There's not even, you know, uh, heavy support weapons or, you know, medium machine guns. There's no DDG 12.7 millimeter machine guns or 7.62 or even 5.56 belt fed machine guns, to my knowledge. The only thing that is branded DDG are AR-15 pattern assault rifles and self-loading pistols chambered for 9x19mm. Uh, so let's get into the models. We first got the C5, uh, which is a polymer-framed double single-action CZ-75 style pistol. Uh, it's a compact variant. Then we have the C6, which is basically the same gun with a slightly longer slide, slightly longer barrel, also a polymer-framed double single action 9 by 19 hammer fire pistol. The last pistol we have is the DDG-19. This is a Glock pattern pistol, specifically kind of third generation style. Uh, it has three pins, uh, three slot, 1913 Picatinny accessory rail, pretty simplistic slide. Um, you see it with unmarked mystery 15 round uh, metal reinforced polymer Glock style magazines. Note I said that Glock magazines from the factory, OEM Glock mags, they're basically, they have a metal insert and they're wrapped with polymer. 
So you see the same style magazines uh, with these DDG-19s, although they are completely unmarked to the best of my knowledge. So these models um, of pistol, you know, they're, they're, they're pretty innocent and um, they're pretty expensive too on the Iraqi black market. Some will go between like 15, 2,500 USD um, back a few years ago when this was popular. Besides pistols, there's there's the assault rifles, and those are AR-15 pattern. Um, there's basically several styles of AR-15 pattern DDG, DDG carbines. Well, I really should say DDG carbine, because the DDG AR-15, uh, it is marked basically DDG-4 carbine C-A-R-B-I-N. Of course, that is like carbine misspelled, whether that was like purposely or not purposely, God only knows. Um, but there, there's a few different types of those. You'll see those with one style of billet, lower and upper receiver, that's very identifiable. And then there's a less common second gen. I, I call it second gen because uh, they came out kind of after it seems of a billet lower receiver that you also see DDG for carbons with. Those, I'm not 100% sure, are actual DDGs. Those could be faked ones. Um, of course, with anything expensive, especially in the Middle East, you'll get fake copies of it. But, um, yeah, then you'll also get the forged um, upper and lower receiver, so traditional, like, AR-15 uh, forged upper lower receivers that you'll see, you know, something like, you know, like an Anderson receiver, those are like forged receivers, your basic AM-15, your basic Palmetto state armory receiver, I'm assuming um, you know who these companies are, but those are two popular American companies that manufacture AR-15 lowers, well, they finish forgings and, and brand them. There's really only a few companies who do the actual forgings for AR-15 forge lowers, and, you know, companies will purchase these forgings unfinished. They're technically not a firearm. They'll finish them with using, you know, usually nowadays CNC machines. They'll mark them, um, and then, you know, distribute them from there. Um, so, yeah, there's the, 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 the three different types of DDG-4 carbines are kind of confusing and can trip people up, especially since there are fake DDG-4 carbines. You don't really see fake D DDG C5s and C6s. I, I've yet to see one of those. I have seen several, um, numerous actually now, fake DDG 19s. Some are better fakes than others, but they're all pretty obvious. So what, what do these DDG weapons have in similar? Well, here's where it gets interesting. So all these DDG models have Israeli made counterparts. The C5 and the C6 um, are basically the Bull Armory Cherokee compact for the C5 and the Bull Armory Cherokee full size for the C6, very interesting. So that's one Israeli company that makes two models that are basically identical besides markings, some markings, the actually nine millimeter written on the chamber of the C5 and the Bull Armory pistols, the Cherokees, it's pretty much identical. But besides, of course, you know, the manufacturer markings on frame, that's different. And then we got M-TAN. Um, M-TAN, they, they, they produce basically components as well as complete assault rifles and one handgun. So again, I said the C5 and the C6, they match guns made by Bull Armory. So that leaves the DDG-19 and who makes something that is pretty much identical to that? MTAN does with their Ramon pistol. So the Ramon is exactly like the DDG-19, a third generation style Glock, it's three pin, uh, does have the Picatinny accessory rail. Um, th these pistols are pretty much identical besides the slide. They have the serial number located on a piece of metal right at the rear of the like uh, frame, similar to some Walter polymer frame pistols, or you might be more familiar with Canix, uh, like the TP9 series. Those usually have serial numbers located at the rear of the frame on a metal plate. The DDG-19, the M10 Ramon, 
same thing. The grips are like the, how the C5 and the C6 are similar to the Bull Armory pistols. The, the whole frame of the DDG-19, it's, it's, pretty, it's identical besides the markings to the M10 remote. And when I say identical, I, I really mean it. Uh, the whole styling, you can even see the circular injection mold marks for where the, you know, I'm assuming, you know, it's a, some sort of reinforced polymer injection molded frame. Um, it's the same. It's the same locations for the mold marks. If you don't understand, it's very expensive to make these molds for these for these guns. You'll, uh, you know, you'll hear things like, uh, I'm sure if you're in the U.S. and you heard of the, uh, what would Stoner do, AR-15, um, that's made by KE Arms. Um, I don't know if they still make it. I think they still might have it as a SKU. But the point I'm making is that rifle uses a KP-15 polymer lower receiver made by KE Arms. The whole process to redesign that mold um and from the previous like it was it obviously the the kp-15 lower receiver is inspired by the cav arms lower receiver and, and previous um russell fagan he kind of led this design process on the mold for the kp-15 lower anyways that whole process of making that mold getting a company to machine out the molds for the kp-15 lower that's extremely expensive also the to get this whole setup to, to make those. That's not something you can do in a basement or, you know, a, a, a small shed. Like, that that's a really expensive process. And for people to say, oh, you know, the, the, the you know, the M10 Ramones, you know, it, it's, it's obviously the DGG-19 was inspired by it, but it's just, the DGG-19 is just a clone of the M10 Ramone. That's a very expensive fucking clone. Like, to be exactly the same with the same molding mark, same serial number, why the fuck would someone clone that and not just clone, uh, like, a, a third-generation Glock 19? Doesn't make sense to just go out and be like, hmm, I'm going to clone this Israeli gun. Hmm, I'm going to clone this other Israeli gun. Oh, and while I'm at it, I'm going to clone two other Israeli guns. It doesn't make fucking sense, um, in my opinion. So, you got M10... That makes exact clones, <laughs> no, I shouldn't say clones, but exact counterparts to the DDG Carbon, the assault rifles, and the DDG Glock thing, the DDG-19. And then you got Bull Armory, who makes, you know, the C5 and the C6 counterparts. So, there's, to me, there's an obvious connection there. You have two different Israeli companies making guns that are very similar to this ghost company um obviously i think there's a connection there also to note with the ddg4 carbines is the accessories so m10 uses a very specific rear sight they also have a, a vertical pistol grip uh, that goes on their quad rail um, as well as rail covers. Their quad rail systems, their rear sight, their gas block, uh, and, the, and the rail covers are all very unique to M10. You will see these exact accessories on some DDG4 carbines. I'm just going to call them carbines, even though it's spelled, spelled incorrectly. You will see these exact accessories that you'll see on M10 MZ-15s, which is M10's semi-auto AR-15 pattern rifles, and M10's MZ-4s, which are their select fire counterparts. So technically the DDG carbines are MZ-4s, clones, or basically MZ-4s. It, it's, it, the, the connections here, it's, it's, it's quite obvious. And if that doesn't get any better, um, the weapons, you know, you'll see the Kurdish commandos use uh, that, you know, look like MZ4s, MZ4s, or DDG4s. They also use Israeli E-Lander magazines, as well as the IMI Defense G2 magazines. Pretty interesting. So, it, like, 
why would if if these if there's no connection to Israel here, why would a company we're assuming based you know somewhere in the Middle East clone Elander magazines, which is a steel magazine. It has very unique ridges on the bottom. It's very obvious to identify once you know what you're looking at. As well as the IMI Defense G2 magazines. Why would a company go out of their way and clone both of these Israeli magazines and then also clone these other accessories like the rear sight, the exact rail covers, the exact pistol grip? Mm, it's a little much. You'll also see some of the DGG4 carbons, carbines uh, with, you know, some fab, fab, def fab defense, sorry, uh, like G Core, I believe it's called. The, it's a polymer buttstock. So, you got all this going. Um, not only that, so we got the link to Kurdistan, where we have Kurdish commandos documented with what appear to be DDG-4 carbines, as well as, you see, you might say those, well, those could be M10 carbines, because you can't, you know, see the, the markings. Not only are they carrying, like, DDG-4 carbines, but also confirmed DDG-19 pistols as sidearms. There are several photos of them carrying DDG-19 pistols, as well as a video um, that the Kurdish commandos posted where they have some weapons laid out on a table, and boom, right there you see a DDG-19 pistol. So, what is this link to Kurdistan? Well, of course, Kurdistan, like I said previously, is like a Kurdish ethnic-controlled country, but not a country, autonomous region, you know, weird thing. They don't necessarily get along with all of their Arab neighbors. Guess who also doesn't get along with their Arab neighbors? Israel. Guess what? The Kurds need weapons. They always need weapons. They're kind of in a hot region. They got a few people who don't like them. Um, so the Kurds, they need weapons, and specifically new production weapons for, you know, special forces, whatnot. Of course, they do get weapons from NATO nations and have, you know, old stockpiles of old AKs and whatnot. But, you know, those are kind of Old AKs, dime a dozen, um, but, you know, shit does break over time, so it's nice to have new stuff, especially stuff for, like, of course, like the Kurdish commandos, where you can add force multiplying, I hate that term, but, you know, accessories like uh, IR lasers, you know, optics, whatnot, white lights, you know, and, you know modern slings, you know, be, be a little bit more high speed. So, I believe the Kurdish government in some fashion acquired either components for the DDG weapons, the complete weapons, or the complete weapons. And so, or both, frankly. And it, it, it's quite possible that the Kurdish government, they assembled some of the, the DDG weapons there you know, of course they're using some, but I, I really don't understand the how these leaked out down to lower Iraq and that black market where eventually they end up in Lebanon. Uh, we've seen pictures of Hezbollah uh, with the DDG-4 carbines, which is wild. Of course, that probably, those were probably in Iraq and um, ended up going, you know, through Syria to Lebanon. You know, there's that arms trafficking route there that's also how you have you know like ak-103-2s that made their way from libya probably via turkey um into you know northern syria to those rebels those ak-103-2s some of them have found their way into iraq so there's there's a big arms kind of trafficking circle there and it and it is it is bizarre how these ddg weapons somehow likely escaped Kurdistan into the Iraqi black market. I am not sure how, but that is that is one theory. Um, anyways, two, what, what's important to note about the, the DDG weapons is sometimes you will see them with packaging, with the pistols. The packaging is identical to the Israeli counterparts for the most part. Like with the DDG-19, 
they use the same plastic box, they come with the same tools, a cleaning rod, a cleaning brush, and even the little white label that marks what the gun is, is the same between the M10 Ramon and the DDG-19. The, the boxes for the C5 and the C6 are also pretty much the same boxes you'll see with the Bull Arms pistols, as well as their cleaning accessories. What's even weirder with the Bull Armory pistols and the C5 and the C6 is they both, they all come with the same Tang Folio magazine. Um, it has the Tang Folio marking, orange follower, same thing on the floor plate on the top of it, it says like, has a, a writing PTSD or something similar to that. I will show a picture of it. Can't remember off the top of the head, but nonetheless, comes with the same tank folio magazines. Very bizarre. Um, it, this is where it, it gets a little weirder. So when when I claim that you know I, I believe DDG is linked to Israel or possibly just a Israeli puppet thing, uh, there's a couple people specifically on Instagram or Twitter, arms researchers I'll call them even though they kind of suck at their job gonna be honest they'll send a rolling stones article as proof uh, that actually ddg was set up by an american who brought tools from the united states illegally and set up a factory in erbil in iraqi kurdistan and um yeah they in that article the rolling stones article terrible source uh there, there's no substantial proof so um in May 2023, the U.S. Justice Department did publish something, basically, you know, a long article, I'll show some pictures of it uh, here right now, about Ross Rod Rod uh, Rod Rogio? Ross, R-O-G-G-I-O, I don't know how to pronounce that, but you get the point. A 54-year-old American who was arrested by the, I believe, the FBI uh, after he returned from Iraqi Kurdistan um, for he was allegedly I guess proven now so he is in prison so he was I guess according if you trust the US government torturing a individual in Kurdistan Kurdistan as well as accused of setting up an illegal arms factory um, where he exported tools and weapons parts to this factory in Iraqi Kurdistan where they built AR-15 pattern assault rifles and Glock style pistols. It says that in the article, there's another paid art, uh, there's two Rolling Stones articles. One is behind a paywall. I remember reading that when it wasn't behind a payroll, paywall, but there, there's no photos. There's not really any good proof. And AR-15 pattern assault rifles and Glock 19 pistols or nine millimeter pistols, whatever. That That's not proof that those were DDG weapons. Because, let's see, in, what was it, July of 2023, uh, Kurdish security forces posted a video, which I'll overlay now, hopefully, of them, you know, videos of inside a large weapons factory uh, that was illegally being run. In this factory, guess what we see? We see various AR-15 pattern assault rifles that are not DDG style. Um, we see... We see parts for those AR-15s, we see lowers, we see AKs, we see like Type 56-1s that look fresh sitting in bags. We got stripped SVDs, and then we do got fake Glocks. There definitely are fake Glocks made in Iraqi Kurdistan. Um, they're not the same as the DDG-19s though. They're, they're, they're actually trying to be fake Glocks, where the DDG-19 it's a Glock knockoff, but it's not trying to pretend to be a Glock 19. It doesn't say, you know, made by fucking Glock or whatever on it. These are trying to be Glocks. They have fake Glock logos, all that shit. So, in May, in July of 2023, that video was published. What gets weird? Okay, so, you know, people claim this, you know, factory, this is what the DDG weapons came from. So... Later on, come, come now recently, 2024, late 2023, I have found pictures, and I'll post these right now, of what appeared to be DDG-4 carbines 
on non DDG lowers. They're forged receivers, so they're basically MZ4s. Like the DDG4 carbines, at least some of them or most, um, on the forged front sight gas block, there's an E. I'm assuming that's for M10, because you also see this on the M10, MZ4s, MZ15s, they have an E. Of course, some people may know that um, they're used to AR-15 gas blocks for flat top rifles. They'll have an F or some other markings for, you know, the A1, A2 front sight gas blocks. Uh, but in the United States, most people know about F mark front sight gas blocks. Well, the M10 ones, they appear to all have E's, which is another weird thing. Why do these M10, these DDG4 carbines, they also have E's? at least on some of them, on their gas blocks. And coincidence? There's a lot of coincidences here for not to be related. Not to mention, at least on one DGG-4 carbine, I have seen, you know, date markings on the barrel, and there's another E. So, very interesting. Anyways, so, back to these M10, MZ-4 sanitized rifles I've seen. They have the same M10 quad rail which is very identifiable people are like oh it's just a quad rail no the m10 style quad rails that are on the dgg4 carbines it's very specific once you know what you're looking for you'll know they also have the same m10 style rear sight an e marking on the gas block but the lower is basically sanitized one does not have a serial number or any markings of all sorts this one was refinished by a gunsmith so who knows maybe he removed the markings the other one does have markings. The markings are in English for the selector, safe semi-auto, and a serial number that starts with a K. Okay, going back to this factory. In this factory, we did see, we did see some engraved lowers that were just sitting on a table. These lowers have the same style of markings. A serial number, and fire selector markings. And it looks like the serial number is in the same spot. Fire selector markings very similar. So maybe there is a connection there. Maybe these lowers were um, after this all happened. Um, maybe whatever agreement with Kurdistan and Iraq, the Kurd with the agreement with Iraqi Kurdistan and Israel or these companies have. Uh, Maybe they're just dropping DDG and going to completely sanitize rifles and not even bothering with this fake meme company. But I'm going to be honest, it's kind of a meme company. and I love how it has the OSS kind of spade on it. It's hilarious. Um, but maybe they're like, ah, fuck it. Let's just go to completely sanitize. That or these could be old parts. Um, I'm not sure, but it's an interesting connection. Also, in that factory, uh, someone's OPSEC was horrible. Because next to the pile of Glock frames uh, in this factory, we can see a FedEx shipping label. On that FedEx shipping label, I could make out the street address, at least the first part, which is 2410, and I can make out Nashville, Tennessee. After some quick Googling of the street number, which was 2410 in Nashville, Tennessee, and what appeared to be a 3722 something zip code, I found a company called Bombinier, I believe that's how you pronounce it, B-O-O-M-B-I-N-E-R-E. -E. Guess what this company does? It is a company that facilitates shipping items to various cities in Iraq, as well as Iraqi Kurdistan, KRG. So, this company in Nashville, Tennessee, which guess what? Guess what Nashville, Tennessee is? What's the link to Kurdistan? The largest area with like ethnic Kurds in the United States is Nashville, Tennessee. So we do have a, a box. We, I'm not saying there was definitely weapons components in there, but it's very coincidental. We have at least one box with a FedEx shipping label that was first shipped from an individual in the United States, FedEx ground, um, home delivery to this forwarding company, which then forwarded it to, I'm assuming it was shipped to Erbil or, you know, likely. And then it ended up in this, you know, arms factory that, that was raided. It's very interesting. 
Um, again, the only thing in that factory that I can possibly link to DDG is those lowers that are very similar to the MZ4 DDG4 style 11.5 inch carbines that this uh, gunsmith and reveal posted images of. Huh. But yes, so what else about DDG? What, what else makes this more confusing is fake DDG guns. So in Iraq, you've got a lot of fake guns. I, I've, I've posted about this on my Instagram several times. You can mainly get like fake Colts. That's Colt M4s and stuff like that. You got fake Kimber pistols. Uh, you got fake HS9s. You got a lot of fake Glocks and whatnot. Some of these are made in Iraqi Kurdistan, but there are fake DDG4 carbines. Um, I have previously mentioned fake, you know, pistols in this discussion, but the biggest fake are the DDG4 carbines, and a lot of people can't tell the difference because you got to be kind of autistic. Um, but the, like, let's for example, the forged lower ones are pretty obvious. They don't have the there's on the DDG4 forged lowers as well as the billet ones and the M10 ones, of course. There's two extra little holes that I'm assuming were drilled uh, for chip removal um, when they were drilling the detent holes for the for the takedown pins for the spring and the detent. You'll see there's two holes on the front takedown and there's one on the rear takedown area. Uh, the clones, they'll not have that. Their engraving is shitty. They don't have the correct quad rails. They don't have the correct rear sight. Um, you can look at the look at the some of the parts. They're they're different. Like especially the takedown pins, you can tell they're lower quality. You see visible machining marks on the small parts, like the magazine release, the takedown pins, this sort of shit. Um, they're not the same, but this can confuse you if you're not at you know the same level of autism I am on this stuff. But if you look at hundreds of these guns, you'll be able to be like, ah, yeah, that's a fake DDG. There are some complicated ones, like. Let's get into the, I believe it's called the, the Eagle Firearms. The Eagle Firearms ones, I, I don't know. I'm not sure on those. Are those clones or are those like a cheaper budget alternative using the possibly MTAN produced lowers? Because the lowers are very similar um, to, the, to the MTAN MZ4 ones, albeit slightly different. Um, they still do have the same two extra holes for the detent um, areas. So those are weird. Of course, they're they're way cheaper looking. They have the cheap free-floating quad rail uh, and cheaper furniture. So I don't. I'm not sure with those. If those were a budget option, um, either assembled somewhere else, uh, like by by you know in, in Kurdistan. I doubt those, I doubt the Eagle Firearms ones were made in Israel. I'm going to be honest, I, I do believe that most of these DGG, the actual ones, were made in Israel. Um, it, it kind of makes sense that some of them could be assembled in, in Kurdistan. That just seems like a lot of extra work. I don't know why would you bother with doing that when they can just be made anyway. And they're, they're making the parts there. The, the, the connection between all of this is that the parts are likely Israeli made. Highly likely. Are they assembled and, sh and like shit in Israel? I can't say for certain. Um, they could be assembled in Kurdistan. But yeah, that is pretty much the whole DDG conspiracy. Um, of course, we'll get to... We'll briefly touch the weird places these have showed up. Uh, in the West Bank, some DDG C5s, a couple 19s, um, have also showed up and documented by Israeli police or Israeli defense forces. They've also found some that were coming into the West Bank, allegedly uh, from Jordan, uh, via like drug and gun smugglers. <sighs> this is where it gets wishy-washy. Could these have been legitimately, you know, just found their way from the Iraqi black arms market, you know, through Jordan, through Syria, somehow into the West Bank? Possibly. Could these also be plants by Israeli intelligence to dissuade the possibility of these being Israeli? I'm not going to rule that out. 
Um, of, of course, you know, Israel's intelligence, they, they, they spend a lot of money to have great, you know, intelligence. And what they do do is in the West Bank, they will find Palestinians who might be connected or are connected to, you know, resistance group there, and they will blackmail them. Uh, it's very clever. It's fucked up, but it's very clever. So, um, saying that, you know, these blackmailed individuals might be given DDG pistols and, you know, told by their new handlers what to do. And then, you know, sometimes they might do something with that. Sometimes eventually the DDG pistol might naturally find its way into the West Bank illicit arms market, which is a thing. As, as much as Israel has a grip over um, all the Palestinian territory in the West Bank, they, they, there's still a lot of arms there, most of which come from Israel. Like, most of their assault rifles are, like, IDF weapons that have walked away, just got stolen and whatnot. But, yeah, you can get really deep in the rabbit hole of conspiracy um, of, of why there's DDG pistols being found in the West Bank primarily. Another weird one which happened recently was a DDG C5 turning up in London, of all places London. I can't explain that one. That's absolutely bizarre. Of course, it kind of makes sense uh, that, you know, DDG weapons primarily exist on black markets. So, you know, a DDG C5 being part of a black arms shipment from a Middle Eastern country being smuggled into Europe and then London kind of makes sense. It is absolutely bizarre, um, and that's the only explanation I can think of. But the thing also looks mint. Like, it's, it, I'll show the picture up now. Hopefully it's up right now. It looks absolutely mint. Um, so that is a wild one. Yeah, it, it was allegedly um, used by a, a, an individual <laughs> who I, I believe goes by went by the nickname Menace to Society. Um, he shot at someone three times and missed, and that pistol, uh, was, uh, found with his DNA on it in a stash, so, very bizarre, uh, but yeah, anyways, hope you liked this video, again, uh, follow me on Instagram, that's where I mainly post, I do have a Twitter, which I do not really use, but follow my Instagram, it's just at the Dixie Mauser, um, I post pretty much every day on there. Anyways, y'all have a good one. Hopefully I'll be making more videos like this uh, soon.